Pause for relation. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to define phosphorylation. Describe substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation. The process of phosphorylation can be easily understood by comparing it with the mechanism of hydroelectric power generation system. So, how hydroelectric power is generated in dams? When a large amount of water stored in the reservoir is released through the gate, the water reaches the turbine with a great force. The turbine uses the force to convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy. Similarly, the H plus ions from the periplasmic space of a cell move through the enzyme ATP synthase. The ATP synthase uses the energy from the flow of H plus ions and catalyzes ADP phosphorylation, thereby converting ADP into ATP. Now, let's discuss this process in detail. Phosphorylation The addition of a phosphate group to a molecule is known as phosphorylation. Usually, phosphorylation results in the formation of complex molecules. But how? Adenosine triphosphate, that is ATP, is a high energy molecule that hydrolyzes into adenosine diphosphate, that is ADP, and orthophosphate, releasing energy of minus 7.3 kilocalorie per mole. Hence, ATPs are known as the energy currency of cells. Substrate level phosphorylation the first substrate level phosphorylation in glycolysis is the transfer of phosphate group from two molecules of 1,3-biphosphoglycerate to two ADP molecules, which results in the formation of two ATP molecules and 3-phosphoglycerate. The second one involves the transfer of phosphate group from the two phosphoenol pyruvate molecules to form two ATP molecules and pyruvate. Thus, a total of 4 ATP molecules are produced in glycolysis. However, since 2 ATP molecules are used in the formation of glucose 6 phosphate and fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate, the net formation is 2 ATPs along with 2 nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, that is NADH molecules. Following glycolysis, the two pyruvate molecules are decarboxylated to form two acetyl-CoA molecules along with two NADH molecules. The substrate level phosphorylation in Krebs cycle involves succinyl-CoA and transfer of phosphate group from gunosine diphosphate which results in the formation of succinate and gunosine triphosphate. However, each glucose molecule produces two pyruvate molecules which in turn produce two acetyl-CoA molecules. The two turns of Krebs cycle result in the formation of two gunosine triphosphate, that is GTP molecules, along with six NADH molecules and two FADH2 molecules. The two GTP molecules are equivalent to two ATP molecules. Now, let's learn about oxidative phosphorylation. In a bacterial cell, Oxidative phosphorylation takes place in the plasma membrane with the help of high energy electron carriers such as NADH and FADH2, that is flavin adenine dinucleotide, which are used to produce ATP in the electron transport system. Electrons are transferred through a series of oxidation and reduction reactions, and this results in the pumping of protons across the plasma membrane into the periplasmic space of the bacterial cell. About 10 protons are pumped for each NADH molecule and 6 protons for each FADH molecule. The interior of the bacterial cell is alkaline in nature, whereas the exterior of periplasmic space is acidic. Since protons are positively charged, they create proton motor force across the membrane which is required for the electron transport system. In the electron transport system, the enzyme complex 2 is utilized when the FADH2 is generated in the Krebs cycle during the conversion of succinate to fumarate. 
the hydrogen ions and electrons from FADH2 are transferred to the coenzyme Q, which accepts two electrons and two protons to yield dihydroxyquinone, that is QH2, and the oxidized coenzyme FAD+. In the enzyme complex 3, electrons are transferred from the coenzyme QH2 to the cytochrome C and iron sulfur protein, that is FES protein. Cytochrome C acts as the electron carrier by carrying electrons to the complex 4. In the enzyme complex 4, the electrons from cytochrome C is transferred to other electron carriers until the electrons join with hydrogen ions and oxygen to form water. Oxygen acts as the final electron acceptor. The ATP synthase is an ATP synthesizing assembly which is driven by the flow of protons. It synthesizes ATP by attaching a phosphate group to the ADP using the energy from the flow of protons. The net ATP production in glycolysis is 2. In Krebs cycle, it is 2. While in electron transport chain, it is 34. Hence, the total amount of ATP produced by aerobic respiration is 38. Let's analyze the role of ATP in metabolism. In the first step of glycolysis, the phosphate from ATP is used to phosphorylate glucose to form glucose 6 phosphate and ADP. In the third step of glycolysis, phosphate from ATP is used to phosphorylate fructose 6 phosphate to form fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate, and ADP. This phosphate prevents glucose from passing through the cell membrane. Thus, ATP plays an important role in preventing the molecules from leaving the cell during metabolism. Thus, we have seen the process of metabolism in bacteria, which enables us to understand the uptake and utilization of organic and inorganic compounds required for the growth and maintenance of bacteria. Summary Substrate level phosphorylation is the enzymatic transfer of a phosphate group from an organic molecule to adenosine diphosphate molecule to form adenosine triphosphate. The net ATP production in glycolysis is 2. In Krebs cycle, it is 2. While in electron transport chain, it is 34. Hence, the total amount of ATP produced by aerobic respiration is 38.